problem number one is asking you to find the Maclaurin series and the radius of convergence of a given function. In this case, our function is cosine of 5x. So remember, if you already know the Maclaurin series for cosine of x, you can find the Maclaurin expansion for cosine of 5x. All you have to do is plug in 5x anywhere you see an x inside of your series. But let's say you didn't remember what the Maclaurin series of cosine of x is. Let's go through step by step how to solve for a Maclaurin series expansion. So, remember, if it says Maclaurin series, it's automatically assumed that its center is at zero. So I'm going to go ahead and denote that my a is equal to zero in this case. And I need that a value because that's what I have to plug into my derivatives to get my Taylor coefficients. So I'm going to start by making my chart. I have my n column. I have my fn of x column. And I have my fn of a column. So I'm going to start with just a few terms. 0, 1, 2, 3 is usually a good way to start off trying to find your Taylor coefficients. At n equals 0, f 0 of x is the original function itself. So I start with cosine of 5x. I take the derivative of that. I end up with negative 5 sine of 5x. I take the derivative of that again. I end up with negative 25 cosine of 5x. And then I end up with 125 sine of 5x. Now, if I go through and I evaluate at my center, which fn of a in this case is just 0, because our series is known to be a Maclaurin series. If I go ahead and plug those in, I end up with 1. Sine of 0 is 0, so that term is just 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so I end up with negative 25 as my second term. And sine of 0 is 0. Now, two of my terms are zero, so I'm actually going to go ahead and add a fourth term, or a fifth term in this case, rather. So if I take the derivative of, again, uh, 125 times 5, that would be uh, 625 in this case, cosine 5x. So, knowing that now, I can go ahead and reevaluate this at zero. I end up with 6. 25. Okay. So now we have our Taylor coefficients. We can go ahead and plug into our Maclaurin series formula. So I have the series for a Maclaurin series, or the formula for a Maclaurin series, is n equals 0 to infinity fn of 0 x to the n divided by n factorial. So now I have all these coefficients, and I can figure these out by plugging in my x's. So let's go ahead and let's write out our series terms and see if we can figure out what the pattern is. So my first term in this case is 1x to the 0 divided by 0 factorial. That corresponds to that term right there. My second term would be 0, so I don't include that one. This term would be at n equals 2, so I have minus 25 x squared divided by 2 factorial. Third term at n equals 3 doesn't exist. So I look at my fourth term. My fourth term is 625 x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial. And I also would have a bunch of other terms, but I'm not going to sit here and expand out 15 different terms. The three terms should be okay to try to find the pattern. So, if I look at the overall term, I want to write this series in terms of its own Maclaurin expansion. So, I note that my x powers are growing by a factor of 2. So, that tells me that I have an x to the 2n term in there, which makes sense because cosine of x also has an x to the 2n term. I have a 2n factorial on the bottom. This would be 0 factorial. This is 2 factorial. This is 4 factorial. So I'm going to divide by 2n factorial. Now I just need to figure out what all the rest of these terms are doing. So I do have a negative sign at n equals 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write negative 1 to the n. Now I have 1, 25, and 6, 25. So to me, that sounds like... Let's see, that would be 5 squared, this would be 5 to the 4th. 
So it looks like it's also following 5 to the 2n in this case. Because if this would be our n equals 1 term for this corresponding series, we would want 5 squared. This would have to be 5 to the 4th at our corresponding n equals 2 term. So therefore, I can conclude that all the terms in here should match my terms, and this is the Maclaurin expansion for cosine of 5x. Now, there's one last step that we have to do. We have to find the radius of convergence. So to find the radius of convergence, we have to apply either ratio or root test. Or if it's a geometric series, we could also just apply a geometric series test. Check that as well. But in this case, because we have a factorial, probably best to stick to ratio test. So let's go ahead and let's write out ratio test. And let's see what we can get. So remember, ratio test says that we have the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n around absolute value bars. So... If I go ahead and take the absolute value of this and find my a sub n plus 1 term, I already have my a sub n term because remember that's just the original series itself. My a sub n plus 1 term is equal to, so I'll rewrite the limit as n approaches infinity. I have x to the 2n plus 2 because remember I want to plug in n plus 1 wherever I see an n term in my series. I have a 5 to the 2n plus 2 divided by 2n plus 2 factorial. And that's multiplied by 2n factorial over x to the 2n, 5 to the 2n. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can do a little simplification in this case. We end up dropping out the x to the 2n's and the x to the 2n's, so that term will cancel out with that term. We're still, we still are left with an x squared up here though, so we'll keep that in mind. We have 5 to the 2n plus 2, 5 to the 2n, so those terms cancel out. And we're left with just a 5 squared up here. The 2n factorial cancels with the 2n plus 2, so remember we can expand out the first couple terms. And eventually we end up getting 2n factorial on the bottom based on the rules of a factorial. So I can go ahead and cancel that as well, and we're left with a couple extra n terms. So it's important to note in this case that if I take the limit as n approaches infinity, I have x squared 25 over 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. Now, if I take the limit of this as n approaches infinity, because I still have n terms on the bottom but no n terms on top, this whole limit goes to 0. Because this whole limit goes to 0, regardless of whatever x value I plug into, save for infinity, I should always get zero. So what this tells me is that because any x value will satisfy this, my radius of convergence is equal to infinity. So we found our Maclaurin series, and then by applying ratio test, we found that our radius was equal to infinity. So on exam 3b, this would be answer E. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.